Welcome to the Whiskey Jake YouTube channel. Uh, it is October, which means Halloween is coming up. Uh, that means Halloween candy. And what better way to explore whiskey than pairing it with all of the delicious treats your kids are going to pick up. Or you, if you know, you're still trick-or-treating. Not judging. Um, so I'm gonna do four of these. Now, I'm not trying every whiskey or even every style of whiskey. Um, it's kind of impossible in four episodes. So each week I'm going to pick um, a bourbon, a rye, and a scotch, and four pieces of candy. Uh, and then I will talk about each one of the whiskeys briefly, uh, and then try them with the four pieces of candy, uh, and kind of just talk about what that experience is. So uh, this week, we're gonna start off with just a regular old plain old Hershey's milk chocolate bar. Going into a Kit Kat crispy wafer. Uh, and then the ever classic Reese's peanut butter cup. And one of my favorites, an Almond Joy. Now, this week's whiskeys, our, our bourbon is from Treaty Oak in Dripping Springs, their Ghost Hill bourbon. It's a weeded bourbon, so it's 57% corn, 32% uh, wheat, and 11% um, barley. Our rye, I mean, I, when thinking about pairing it with candy, there's really only one I can think of, especially when it comes to chocolate, and that's the Balcones Texas rye. Um, it's 100% malted rye, but they use some specialty malted ryes uh, that give it some dark chocolate and espresso flavors. Uh, so I'm interested in seeing what that's like. And then, for the scotch, I chose a blended. Um, the Famous Grouse Ruby Cast Finish. So it is your Famous Grouse that has been aged in Ruby Port Cast. So it's got some of those little sweet fruit notes in it. Um, I'm gonna start with the bourbon. So the bourbon itself, it's got your traditional vanilla caramels, um, a little oily in texture. Um, kind of short finish uh, at 95 proof uh, it doesn't burn the rye uh, so much chocolate and espresso very light in texture that chocolate and espresso really come through uh, you do pick up that rye spice in the finish though I'm gonna have to get some water for this Uh, just smells like punch. I mean, it you get those tradition, you get the malted barley, that kind of that cereal, but with some dry red fruit in the nose. The palate's a little sweeter than your normal famous grouse with some dried fruits in it. Um, all in all, which I think are going to pair greatly with this. I'm gonna grab some water real quick. Okay, now, first up, the Hershey's bar. So, uh, milk chocolate too, so it's not dark chocolate. Hmm, yeah, maybe, if I can get this open. All right, there we go. So. All right, so initially it takes, the chocolate takes away from any of the sweetness in the Ghost Hill bourbon. Um, however, the chocolate, the finish in the chocolate seems to be enhanced. Yeah, the second time doing it, it still, it seems to dull and lighten the bourbon uh even in its texture uh not my favorite at the moment all right the rye though with those dark chocolate i mean uh notes in it i'm hopeful
Okay, interesting. So on the initial taste, it subdued the um, chocolate on the palate, but really enhanced it in the finish. Uh, it also brought out more of that espresso um, notes to it. It's good. It's a nice pairing um, overall. It really kind of overpowers the whiskey, I think. Um, but then it really amplifies the finish of it. All right, so it really brings out the, kind of the cereal grains of the barley, brings out that grain, but really highlights the um, fruit from the ruby port cask. Uh, really lightens it up. It takes away any kind of um, smokiness that there might've been in it. Oh, that's, yes, that's really nice. I mean, and then because of the um, red fruits from the um, Ruby Port, uh, it brings out kind of that chocolate kind of in the end and really complements it well. All right, if I'm gonna have to declare a winner of the uh, Hershey's Milk Chocolate Bar, a um, winner of the Hershey's Milk Chocolate Bar between these three is the Ruby Port cask. All right. All right, moving on to the Kit Kat. Uh, no. uh. All right. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. All right, so bourbon first. Again, this is the Ghost Hill Treaty Oak. Pretty Hope Ghost Hill. So initial take is it um, does mellow out the vanilla in the bourbon that you normally get. It also takes away any of the heat from the um, proof. And so you kind of get this really cooling mellow um, with a really rich vanilla finish um, from the wafer and the uh, Kit Kat. Uh, hmm. But the wheat kind of shines through. Um, it's really lovely. All right, moving on to the Balcones uh, Texas Rye 100. Wow. Okay, that is overly chocolate. Um, it, it, that would turn into an in, intense chocolate taste there on that. Um, Yeah, that's really all, and the combination of the vanilla from the wafer and then the chocolate around it really turns that into an intense um, thing of chocolate. All right, the Ruby Port Cask. Hmm, initial reaction is almost a bitter start before those fruits come in uh, from the port finish. Yeah, still kind of that same initial things that right at the very start, it's, very, it's kind of overly bitter. Um, 
It's like it takes away all the flavor from the um, scotch and then kind of comes in with these soft root flavors, but it's hard to get that um, bitterness out of your mouth. All right, so if I had to declare a winner out of these three with the Kit Kat, it is going to be the Treaty Oak Ghost Hill Bourbon and the Kit Kat. All right, moving on to the Reese's. Now, I typically have these frozen, but I forgot to put it in the freezer. Just a personal preference on uh, that. All right, we're gonna start with Treaty Oak's Ghost Hill Bourbon. Quick snap of bitter before you get into the vanilla that's complementing the peanut butter in the uh, Reese's. Yeah, cool. A little bitter. Um, not the greatest complementary flavors in the world on that one. Still some bitterness, not near as much. I mean, the chocolate from the rye kind of comes through and helps save that. Um, but there's definitely, I don't know if it's the peanut butter, but there's definitely a bitter, like a kind of a quick shot of bitterness to it. Yeah. Whoa. All right. I love Reese's peanut butter cups, but this may be my least favorite pairing so far. All right, on to the famous grass ruby port cast finish. All right, not as bitter as the um, other two, but whew. I'm guessing it's the peanut butter. There's something about the peanut butter and the um, whiskey that's not going well together, but um, which is weird, they have a, well, I wouldn't call it whiskey, but they have things that call themselves peanut butter whiskey, but. <clears throat> All right, if I had to declare a winner, and I hate that I need to, I don't, there's really not a clear winner out of these, because even that, Oh. Like it's just a, there's, there's a touch that's bitter. I mean, I can't keep going back to that because that's what it does. It takes the sweetness from all of these and those kind of, whether it's vanilla, whether it's the chocolate, whether it's the dark red fruits that you get in the scotch that kind of cancels all of those out and just overpowers the whiskey. Um, if I had, did have to declare a winner for the Reese's, it would be the Ruby cask, but really clearly, Nobody won that one. All right, onward. Definitely need water after that. Oh, almond joy. All right, coconut and uh, almonds and chocolate. I mean, this cow yeah, is one of my favorite treats. As I suspected, oh yeah, the bourbon, it just really, it blends in with the um, Almond Joy. Now I have to say with that Almond Joy, I did not have the almond in that bite. Um, since I didn't have it in that one, I'm gonna not have it in any of them. And I know that changes it because it's an Almond Joy. Um, maybe I'll go grab another piece and I'll make sure that I have a slight a piece of the almond in with all three of them. But, um, Now that bite was with the almond, which did change the complexity. I mean, it really brought out and highlighted the vanilla notes in the bourbon. Um, 
I feel like it highlighted the wheat in it as well. Um, because it had this kind of cooling but earthy kind of along with the coconut and vanilla texture. Um, it's quite lovely. All right, so moving on to the Balcones rye. Uh, so after this one though, I will have to take a quick break to pick up the uh, other piece of Almond Joy for the um, scotch. Uh, it'll be an instant in your world because you know we'll cut to it. Interesting, kind of like the bourbon. The rye kind of just blends into it. I mean, with the chocolate notes that come from their rye, it kind of blends in like it's almost like a liquid finish of the uh, Almond Joy part without the almond. Um, yeah. The bite with the almond, oh, it definitely changes the complexity of it. Uh, yeah, not near as complimentary. Um, definitely a contrasting flavor in the sense that it provided, uh, well, a funk to it. Uh, I don't want to just call it bitter because it wasn't, um, I guess you could call it bitter, but the, <clears throat> Not my favorite. We're gonna call it that. All right, I'm gonna take. You're gonna take your one second um, break while I get another piece of almond joy. All right. Well, welcome back. I hope you appreciated your one second break. We are moving on to the famous grouse uh, ruby cask finish. Ooh. Okay, that initial thing is it highlighted the smokiness of the scotch and the fruit flavors at the same time. Almost like a smoked apple. Interesting. So the bite with the almond in it uh, was very flat until the very end um right there before the finish the fruit notes came in but other than that it was very flat all right if i had to declare a winner for the um almond joy it's gonna be the treaty oak ghost hill which is a little surprising. Um, I did not crown the Texas Rye 100 a winner out of any three of those, whereas I thought the chocolate and espresso flavors in that um, rye whiskey would have complemented these very well. Um, you know, hey. So, well, these were all chocolate-based. Um, one of the episodes will include things like nerds and gobstoppers, and so, it's Halloween, it's October. Let's have some fun with our whiskey and um, our Halloween candy. So yeah, just uh, part one of four. And so please t continue to tune in. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>